What's up guys, welcome to Read Switch Tube. Do you remember the last Slayer Exciter circuit, maybe la last time? And uh, that I've been using a simple Slayer Exciter circuit. And today, I'm going to beef it off by using a more powerful transistor on a heat sink. Here will be the circuit diagram, it's similar to the last time. Here will be the circuit diagram. And there, if you have one turn on the primary, you should have 100 turns on the secondary. So, if I use in 3 or 4 turns, I must have like 300 to 400 turns to keep this circuit going. And it's basically like the last time, but we just removed the LEDs because I've tried it and it um, blows out. And the transistor, this time I'm going to be using is TIP3. 1C. This transistor I believe is quite useful, also can handle more currents than the 2N2222 or PN2222 and usually last time it just blows off after I power it with 36 volts to give it high, high powers. And here also have a resonance capacitor, an air car parasitic capacitor. Or cap and then it can basically shut it off by using a high high voltage negative and it will eventually oscillate. So here we'll start to building it. Here is the TIP31C. And you see here. Oh my camera wasn't that clear, but you can definitely see the number TIP31C. And this pen is for base. And this is the collector, and this is the emitter. Don't get it wrong, um, because it's different to the twin two 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 two. I'm going to draw the pin diagram. Here is our transistor looking bad. I'm not super good at drawing. And um, here is the base. Here is the collector. Here is the wait. Wait a minute. Emitter pin. And the emitter will go to the negative as well, you will know. And we were using 22 kilo ohm resistor from last, last time. And basically, follow the circuit diagram. We could simply just add another capacitor. It's unnecessary if you wish then we'll give it the best result because during the oscillation will make loads of bumps and the, the capacitor will filter it out this one i will use in 2.7 uf 400 volts it should be handle all the high frequency oscillations because i'm just using for 36 volts power supply maybe it's 4 amp and here we'll also put it on heat sinks. It's definitely necessary if you're using a high power supply, such as the power supply was higher than 12 volt. I think you definitely need a heat sink. But this time I'm just using a massive one because it dissipates a lot of heat, but still not all the heat. Here is a piece of breadboard that I'm going to use in first. You also need a Tesla coil as well, the main component. Also for primary, I'm going to show you how to wind it. Usually it only works on one polarity, other it does not work in because it needs a high voltage feedback system to do that. I also put a little nail on the top load to show you all the corona sparks. The corona can only be quite visible during it was dark. And here you see this pin was just used to hang the feedback from the secondary coil. This one. So I'm going to show you how to build it. If you any have any troubleshooting or any questions, please ask me down below in the comments below in the comments and I will try to answer your questions. First we insert the capacitor and remember this is for the negative and this is for the positive. Don't get it wrong or else your capacitor will broken or popped. 
then you will need your transistor and uh, slightly put it in there in this line because there you know is the base of the transistor here you can see from there pushing it down and usually it can be hard to insert your transistor in you just got to wobbly and find a right place to push it in usually you can break the pins if you press it too hard so wait a second here, yeah, after I insert the transistor in, you could then definitely see there is the base, there is the collector, I believe, there is the emitter. So, the collector will be going to make, I uh, know, will be collect to the, uh, to the coil, the primary. We're going to make it the, uh, the pri primary side just by a normal wires and connect it to a inserting pins. That I also find another wire that's quite thin. You can insert it into your breadboard like that. Wait. It was. It could be quite tricky to insert it in. Make sure you insert it in properly because you don't want your primary fall out in the middle of the testings, and just wrap it around. The most important part that lots of people get wrong is usually their primary round in the wrong way directions to not follow in this. So it, the the self feedback can be, can't work in to the base of the transistor and then it wouldn't work at all. So if you think that doesn't work, just reverse the primary side. You can reverse the turns or just reverse the electrode and that I'm using. Here with them, and uh, I often suggesting you that you tie those wires up so it wouldn't fall out. Especially if they touch on the top of wires, it might start to arcing that you really don't want. Here I got some thicker gauge of wires and not so thick, the enamel wire that I'm just going to wrap it around. That thing should pull off. Just wait a sec. Here we've done, and just wrap them around. Now you can insert to the positive, um, and the negative. It shouldn't fall out during the testings, and we need. A starting resistor. I also, I also call this a 22 kilo ohm resistor to start the circuit all up. And here we go. Now we just need to connect the negative together. Here we're done. This goes to there. The emitter goes to there, and then eventually goes up to the neg negative. And here I have two probes, just to insert the negative and the positive and to power this circuit and never ever forgot the feedback from the secondary side it's really really important you just insert it in just that simple here we'll do a testing and keep your uh, take your own risk if you cause cause anything by this coil usually can be lethal sometimes because can be lethal to electronic devices here we go three two one fired nothing happens because i think i've just put the wrong polarities of the primary coil wow well, i find out i just connect the wrong pins to the feed uh, to the starter the resistor here we are to testing the second time after I reverse the coil and see no sparks oh yeah mm. yeah see now I have some sparks because I just put it too much turns to the coils and then it on the secondary side, still can't get too much voltage to make that slung break out. 
so if you like this video please like share and subscribe and i will see you next time bye